All right, welcome back today, guys. Today we're going to be getting into the basically the second part of chapter 22, um, looking kind of here at the first part of reconstruction. Okay, so to start out, of course, we have some uh, essential questions. We're going to look at how is the 13th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution significant? How is the 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution significant? How is the 15th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution significant? How was the Tennessee Constitution of 1870 significant? And how was the establishment of the right of all men to vote a significant part of the Tennessee Constitution of 1870? Okay, so those are mainly gonna be the things that we're looking at today. Hopefully gonna to try to answer these questions, of course, by the end of this. All right, so the three Reconstruction Amendments, the 13th, 14th, 15th Amendment are what those are called. Okay, the three Reconstruction Amendments. So for the 13th Amendment, this abolished slavery throughout the United States. So there would no longer be slavery in the United States with the 13th Amendment. The 14th Amendment grants citizenship to all persons born or naturalized in the United States and guarantees them equal protection under the law. Okay, so for most of us, we were born in the United States. That is what gives us our citizenship. That's what makes us U.S. citizens is the 14th Amendment. This is what also made former slaves citizens in the United States was the 14th Amendment because they were either born or naturalized here. And the 15th Amendment protects the right of all citizens to vote regardless of race, color, or previous condition of servitude. Okay, so the 15th Amendment gives everyone the right to vote, all right, no matter what race you are, what color, or even if you are a former slave. Okay, so those are the three Reconstruction Amendments. Uh, that are passed, of course, during Reconstruction that have a significance um, in the United States, okay? So let's look at Tennessee after the war. All right, so let's kind of narrow in from the United States uh, during Reconstruction into Tennessee. So when Tennessee came back under Union control in 1862, Lincoln made Andrew Johnson the state's military governor. Even though Johnson was a Democrat, he was a firm supporter of the Union. Okay, so of course, Lincoln is a Republican, Johnson is a Democrat. Uh, when Johnson became Lincoln's vice president in 1865, though, William G. Brownlow replaced him as governor of Tennessee. Now, Brownlow was a Methodist preacher who turned newspaper editor, and his newspaper, the Knoxville Whig, was the last pro-Union newspaper in the South before the Civil War. Um, he had even been exiled to the North until 1863, when he returned to help restore the state government. All right, so again, Tennessee rejoining the Union. Uh, now, Brownlow sided with the Republicans in Congress in opposition to President Johnson. Uh, Brownlow urged the Tennessee legislature to ratify the 14th Amendment, and Tennessee became the first state of the former Confederacy to be readmitted to the Union on July 24th, 1866. This saved Tennessee from the political fate of other southern states, which had to go through Reconstruction, which again, we kind of talked about in part one, uh, those five military districts that, the con that Congress puts the South in, all that stuff. Tennessee is kind of spared from that, okay? So Brownlow gave former slaves the right to vote and even had the state militia protect them from white vigilantes who tried to prevent them from voting. Next chapter 23, we'll talk about those white vigilantes being the KKK. All right, he also had the state uh, back government bonds to build railroads and other public improvements. Okay, so he's using money, government money, to build railroads and make improvements in Tennessee as well. Uh, after completing his second term in 1869, Brownlow did serve one term in the U.S. Senate. All right. Um, so that's Brownlow's uh, kind of governor, governorship in Tennessee. Uh, now, after Brownlow's term ended, ex-Confederates in Tennessee regained their voting rights, and conservative Democrats once more dominated politics in Tennessee. All right. A constitutional convention met on January 10th of 1870 in Nashville, and the conservative Democrats wanted to wipe out many of the changes made by the radical Republicans. Uh, many of the provisions from the Constitution of 1834 weren't changed in the new Constitution, though. Okay, um, and in keeping with federal requirements, slavery was forbidden, and African American men had the right to vote. Okay, so this is the 13th Amendment and the 14th Amendment. I'm sorry, the 15th Amendment. 
However, the new constitution did allow the legislator to collect a poll tax, which was a tax people had to pay in order to vote. Now the poll tax was used to keep African Americans from voting because many of them couldn't afford it. Okay, they couldn't pay that poll tax in order to vote. Uh, the constitution also limited the powers of both the governor and the legislator. Um, and the constitution of 1870 was approved on March 26th of 1870. All right, so that is all that I have for you today. All right, one more time, just wanna go back to these questions. Uh, how was the 13th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution significant? Again, it abolished slavery. How was the 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution significant? Uh, it gave people born in the United States citizenship. And how was the 15th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution significant? Uh, again, it allowed everyone to vote except for women. It gave all men the right to vote. Uh, how was the Tennessee Constitution of 1870 significant? Again, uh, it outlawed slavery, okay, and gave African American men the right to vote, um, but it did create a poll tax, okay? So how was the establishment of the right of all men to vote a significant part of the Tennessee Constitution of 1870? Again, gave all men the right to vote, no matter color uh, or previous forms of servitude, um, but it did establish that poll tax that Afri that kept African-American men from voting, okay? So that is all that I have for you today. All right, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, but if not, we will see y'all next time.